Apple night with Dotson Adebayo. I won't even lie to you. This gramophone it always gives me a headache. <laughs> and tonight's no different. It's all about the rules of grammar. You laugh. I ain't that a shame. Yeah. Put that another way. Ain't that that a shame. No, no, it's it definitely ain't that a shame this time. Uh, our grammarians are Terry Victor and also Neville Gwynn. And what's your feeling about rules of grammar, though? 0500 909 693. Do you give us a call and give us your thoughts there. Are there rules of grammar that used to be taught in schools that we just don't know or care about anymore? And does that matter? If we don't care about them, if we don't know about them, if we don't use them anymore, are they now redundant, those rules? Or do you feel that they're sacrosanct just because we don't use them, we don't know about them, we don't care about them, that they're still there, engraved in stone, and we should observe them, if possible, if we've got the education uh, that warrants it. Give us your thoughts, 0500 909 693. We've got David in Manchester in just a moment. Bear with us, David. But John in Woking, first of all, what are your thoughts on this? Um, hello, Don, uh, and uh, Neville and Terry, entertaining programme, as always. Well, thank you. Um, on, on the whole, I'm more with Terry than Neville. I, I think grammar should be uh, governed by usage, rather than some prescription. For example, I go around splitting infinitives whenever I get the chance, and also using prefaces in the, at the end of sentences. Uh, but there are some lines in the sand which um, they, things make me physically wince if I hear them. Uh, could of is certainly one of them. I find that just uh, illiterate and ignorant. Uh, another one, between you and I, she told you and I, uh, that Ooh, that makes me, it's like fingernails down the blackboard, that is. Um, I, I didn't even know that. that was wrong. Is it? What's wrong between you and I? Between No, you, you, would, you, you wouldn't say between I, would you? You'd say between me. Yeah. Therefore, you, you, you shouldn't say between you and I, it's between you and me. Right, is, isn't it, I. Neville? Let's keep this between you and I. I always it's say between you and I. Case. Gosh. I, I, the I objective case. But, but why didn't anybody tell me that that was incorrect grammar? Why didn't you tell me that before, Neville? It's too late I now. I, be... I think I tell you over the second programme or so. You, <laughs> after a preposition had the objective case, you, you wouldn't say, I do it on, uh, I'm going to put this on I, you say, I'm going to put this on me. But John... and, 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 and after a preposition, whether it's between or on or under or whatever, you have the objective case. I is the nominative case. Me is the objective case. But John, look. Oh, Goose, if you want to, yeah. I, I, yeah I, I, I mean, it's I'm, basic I'm, grammar, that is. It, it is to you. And I accept that I'm doing it wrong. Don't get me wrong in this. However, when you've been doing it for a long time, it just stays with you. And I'm just wondering, is that is it a big deal? Because you understand exactly what I mean. And it means the same thing, doesn't bad, it? Bad habits, are, bad no, no, habits should be corrected. It, it, it's a bad habit, but I'm saying it's stuck now. But for you, John... If you've got a bad habit, it, try and get out of it, Doc. Does, do, do your best. Do, I, do I, will, I promise you I will. But, John, does it alter at all the meaning i mean well, exactly the same when i say between you and i as you do when you say between you and me yeah i have to admit with extreme reluctance that if everyone said between you and i i'd have to admit that um okay that's now become the new rule and uh, the rule book would have to be rewritten but um i hope never to see that day <laughs> <laughs> what about the splitting infinitives that you take great joy in throwing into the mix? Well, Give me an example. A, that's just an invented rule. I, I've forgotten who it was, but a couple of hundred years ago, someone um, with nothing better to do invented that rule. And was that you, Neville, a couple of hundred protest, years ago? I protest. I uh, protest. Shakespeare never did, did, did not split an infinitive even 500 years ago. It's not an invented rule. It's a rule which comes from well, the fact that English is basically a German, Germanic language, and... Uh, German does not normally put infinitives uh, sp split them apart. That's why the Queen no, speaks such wonderful English, isn't it? Their infin yeah. the German infinitives don't work like ours. They, ours uh, have two words and, and then adverb Ooh. or whatever. No, no, no. You, 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 you say um zu in, in, in German. Excuse me, Germans do do have the, You said zu haben. That, that's, the, that's what we're talking about. It is, it, is a, it is a Germanic usage, which is I say Shakespeare got right, Chaucer got right. It's not just 200 years ago. You, you, you can't make it be base English on what exactly on what other languages do. English is it? Is it no, no, I, I'm, saying, I'm saying that's how it grew up. That's, that's why it's the way it is. It is I'm saying it has a logic to it, which, which you were denying. That's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm saying there is a reason for it. You said it was some silly old fool just invented it. Completely untrue. It's always been part of English. Now, let's, 
I find I find split infin uh, unsplit infinitives can often sound stilted. I find that to boldly go where no one has gone before is just yes, exactly. the yeah all, perfect all way to go would sound stilted to me. Yeah, but you see, you would, that, would that, reorganize the you would real was, sentence that but, wouldn't sound. Stilted. No, hang on a second. No, Neville John is absolutely right. When people hear on Star Trek to boldly go, as much as it is a split infinitive, he's right when he says to, simply to go where nobody's gone before would be, you know, slightly trite, c c considering what the, you know, enormity of space travel was like for people in the 1960s or otherwise, you know? What you have said is boldly to go, and, and if, he, if it had been done that way, nobody would have objected to it. Hey, John, he's got the only reason you like to boldly go... Wait a minute. The only reason you like to boldly go is because you've, you've heard it so often you've got used to it. But, but if you'd heard it the other way, you'd have been totally happy. Terry, is he right there? No. Um, th there's a couple of things going on there. Firstly, all of these things, you and I and split infinitives, they're a question of aesthetics. They're not a question of rules. They're a question of what sounds right and what you yeah. learn to be right. Yeah. And because Neville has learned one system to be right doesn't mean that the system you've learned to be right is wrong. And what John has learned, again, is another one that could equally be right. Um, I mean, if we want to go back to the great writers, I was looking this up while you were talking. Samuel Johnson observed that um, Milton was too busy to much miss his wife. So there's Milton, one of the great British writers, splitting and splitting and infinities. Yeah, okay, uh, that's a good point. And another one for you, William. Sha uh, a certain William Shakespeare wrote, "We are such stuff as dreams are made on." Preposition at the end of a sentence. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not objecting to that. Uh, preposition why not? The sentence, because they can be necessary. You, 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 it is. It is not a rule. You can never put a, a preposition in the well, sentence. How come you're so hot on? Hot on split infinities, but you're not. You, 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 you do not say up this, up with this. I will not put or the thing is that 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 is a rule which which people are inventing today, but it's not a true. So you're, rule. you're happy with that rule being broken then? No, no, I'm saying it's not a rule. <laughs> Well, you're my hero, David. John. Don't it, stop. It, it, Hang on. It's, it's never been is a, it a rule, rule or it's not? not a rule. Terry, is it it's a rule or a, not? It's a phony rule. I yeah, think exactly. wasn't it Churchill who came up with the preposition at the end? It was something like that. Yeah. Is, so are, are you are all... find that rule in any book on? You won't find that rule in any book on grammar. What, what well, do you mean split... by? Sorry, go on, John. Split infinitive is an equally phony rule, surely. No, no, no. Split infinitive has a logic to it, and 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 as I say, it is a rule which has existed as long as the English language. And and also, Terry, what is a phony rule as opposed to a rule that's not phony? What is a phony rule? <laughs> a, ph a phony rule is one that's been made up with unnecessary. It's like the I before E after C and all of those other rules. They, they were rules to help teach a basic grammar a simple grammar but they didn't allow for the flexibility of the way the english language allows us to be flexible so what about the rigid rules given that um the english language allows us to be flexible what happens to the rigid rules then are, are they there to be broken then to allow that flexibility you I, say i, I think we, there's, there's different ways we use the language I always tend to think of language as a spoken communication. And I, I think, and I, I, I'm not trying to put words in Neville's mouth here, I think Neville tends to think firstly in the form of the written and the job letter type English language. So we, we have... Excuse me, excuse me, there's no such word as firstly, I don't think. Probably not. I'm, you caught one at last. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm throwing these in as hard and fast third, as I can. Not firstly. Yeah, not firstly. Thank you for any, doing any, that. Anyone there's a word called fastly. There's no word called firstly either. Okay. John in working. Thank you for the call, by the way. <laughs> David in Manchester, you've been waiting patiently. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, good evening. Good morning. Morning. Good to meet uh, you. Yeah, uh, the one, well, the, uh, I know he's been a most, he's the one that managers always use, uh, uh, like at the end of the day, and also basically. Yeah. Is, repetitively and uh and the use of the word result when they say we're going somewhere to play and, and we're going to get a result well if you get beat 10-1 you've got a result <laughs> yes it's true <laughs> very, very true is that necessarily breaking any rules of grammar though terry well i suppose you are with result but only if you're going to take grammar as a very prescriptive thing no, why, why are you breaking a rule a result is a result whether you lose or win because the, the implication is there's a word missing there. You're going to get a positive result is what's being suggested by dropping the word. But, but, then, but then you would add that in, wouldn't you? But here, just to say to get a result, once you take out the word positive, 
there's no implication. It's just simply saying we will get some kind of that, result. That's not how it's said, and that's the whole thing about communication. But it's the, the stress, you know what's meant, by the way. We're going to get a result means we're going to get something positive. The reason that that would be um, poor grammar, Neville, um, I would have thought was the fact that you are going to get a result if you play a match, so there's no need to say we're going to get a result because it's already given that you're going to get a result whether it's a draw, a win, or lose. So I, I it becomes it, redundant, doesn't it? The, the statement I, itself becomes redundant. I wouldn't call it poor, gra poor grammar, but poor vocabulary. You know, as you're, you're just misusing a, a, a word and, um, and, and you, you're getting the word wrong. It's just rather a pity because you're weakening your command of the, of the language. And why does it bother you to hear it, David? Because it's it's incorrect, it's, it's imprecise. But but they're saying that they're saying that well at least Neville's saying that it's not incorrect. It, it is incorrect. It's, it's it's bad vocabulary, not bad grammar. Yeah, but you're saying, but we're talking about grammar today, and I'm saying but, that, that then it, then you've got to leave it out because it's got nothing to do with grammar. You just you just use the word wrong, like like you use two plus two equals five when you say when you meant two plus two equals four. But you to say but to say this sentence, we're going to get a result. There's no bad, poor grammar in that, is there? There's no, no... It's, it's just, it's just bad vocabulary. You, you, you right. used the wrong word. What, what, but, but no rules just... of grammar have been broken. No rules of grammar have been broken. Right, and no, remember no, this no. phone-in is about the rules of grammar, and I'm just trying to say to David, look, there's no rules of grammar broken. Let people say it. They might have poor vocabulary, but let people use it. I think it's a fatuous thing to say. It is, it is. I, I, I would grant you that. However, the, the language does allow fatuous statements, doesn't it, Terry? Yes. And okay. so it should. Yeah. And in fact, it, it's not fatuous. We know what is being said. We, so there, there is a we, purpose. We to infer it. what's being said. But we we infer, always, but because you've already accepted that we, we don't know that they, they mean we're going to get a positive result unless you throw in the word positive. By the language you, usage, you're making a virtue out of a vice. In what well, sense? You're, you're making a language out of a usage. No, by allowing its usage, by accepting its usage, you're making a virtue out of a vice by incorrect vocabulary choice. So right. it's 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 a vice, Neville. It, would you agree it's, with it's, that? It's a, it's a disaster. It's like even if you get that one right, the next time there will be a misunderstanding because you haven't used it. You know, if you get into the habit of using language incorrectly, you are going to miscommunicate or misthink or both. That's the problem. You you dare not start because of what it might lead to. But it's not breaking any rules. And, and the other expression of grammar. It is breaking the rules. It's, it's using the wrong word in the wrong place. Of grammar, David. Sorry. The other expression at the end of the day, isn't that an example of circumlocution? Look, at the end of the day, it's an expression that I use all the time because at the end of the day, it kind of makes sense. You know, it's a kind of a punctuation. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, Terry... Like to say instead of in conclusion... I mean, it's that sounds so anyway. boring. I mean, would you... Can you... Can... Hey, hey, you're going to give up at the end of the day, I think, aren't you? <laughs> At the end of the day, I probably won't because, in conclusion, That's sounds a, a little bit sense, yeah, it and it also sense. sounds a little bit too. It's not me, you know what I mean? It's not me. Well, see, which comes to shove, which means much the same. Oh, I like that. I like when push comes to shove. <laughs> can, can, can we say that instead, David? No. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, you'll probably think of a song. Yeah, it's true. But push come, when push comes to shove, rather than in conclusion, would you mind if I chose that instead? I would. Why? Because it's sort of it's, it's a silly cliche. Yeah, it's and a cliche. What, what does is, it there, is there anything wrong with it grammatically? We're talking about rules of grammar here. Uh, nothing wrong with it grammatically. When push I comes to use the expression in final analysis. Oh right, I, and this one I don't understand at all. In the final analysis, <laughs> rather than in the first analysis or in the me middle way through analysis now you laugh terry but you know in the final analysis people use that to suggest that they've gone through all the different permutations they are now the expert because they've mm. seen the final analysis is to give them some kudos in in, in any conversation isn't it yeah it's it, like it just means ultimate. ultimately doesn't it yes People who misuse ultimate all the time as well. But but even saying ultimately, you're trying to say that I will have the last word on this because I know what I'm talking about. No, you're not. You're, you're, you're just saying that this is 
how we, would you... Now it comes to the end of the discussion before we make our decision. But you see, you're, you're, you're making that conclusion. How could you possibly know if this was ultimately, this really is ultimately? Because somebody else could pipe up and say, well, actually, I've got another point to make. Ah. To add. Right. Do you know what I mean? Or rather, now oh, me. I see, I see, I see what you mean. Well, then, then you've misused ultimately, and, and, and unless and there are times when you can actually say it because you you know it and everybody can see it ultimately. But the, so, if, if it's if you if you say ultimately when you when you've got no right to say it, then indeed you've got it wrong. David, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. You know, you've put, <laughs> you've put, uh, twisted us one way and then another with your series of uh, issues. Then, and, and fair point to you, Julia and Telford. You've got one or two other <laughs> grammatical issues as well. Go ahead. <laughs> I guess, I guess good morning, Dr. I'm good listening morning. to this. And, you know, there are so many things that have cropped up tonight that are ni nails down the blackboard, could have, would have... Oh, um, ooh, I don't I. like the sound of that. Oh, yeah. hurting my ears, um, those the nails. One that really gets me, and it's in the newspapers all the time, different to, as opposed to different from. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we've had this. Similar yeah. to different that from. tonight. Yeah, no, no, not tonight. But, uh, okay, sorry. Yeah. As I say, sorry if you have. No, 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 not at all. You're welcome to, even if we had had it tonight, give us your yeah. thoughts. Why does it oh, bother well, you? I mean, I mean um, all right, let's just say, um, ha um, have I been correctly taught? Which is correct? Um, yeah, you have been correctly taught. Which is, which, which is it? I, have I been correctly taught? No, 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 no. Have oh. I been correctly taught? Is it different to, or is it different from? Ooh, you're asking the wrong well, bloke, but I know a couple of people oh, oh. might know. I'm asking, who's the expert there? They're both experts, Neville okay. and Terry. So, okay. Neville, do you want to go first? Yeah, well, you differ from because it's a, a way, and you and it's similar to it's bringing you closer. That the, 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 the different to is illogical, and, and it, as with most ghastly things, it comes from America. But I'm different to you different when it from. comes to this, aren't I, Terry? You are indeed, and I'm nothing at the American one. It's different than, isn't it? But does <laughs> does Neville have a point that worse. different to or different than are illogical? No, I wouldn't have said so. Come on. Uh, but it, one can, one is in comparison. Uh, how a comparison occurs, it's easier to get it with the word compare, which is a, is the other side of this coin, where if you have compare to, you're likening something. Yeah. And if you have compare with, you're, you're offering an assessment, a relative assessment. But you can't say compared from, can you? You cannot. No. So you can say different... Well, you can say it people would know what you meant but no they wouldn't actually not. i don't think they would know what i meant but you cannot say different to it's is what, different from isn't it it's different from that's right I mean, you can't keep saying yes but you can say it because people know what you mean if we're talking grammar here you're absolutely right then i can't understand your comparison then uh, terry with compared to and compared from I can't understand when... I, I, I was reaching for a comparison, trying to find... While I was busily trying to think of a way that different two made sense. Yeah, but you, you, you failed miserably, didn't well, you? I, I can do indifferent two. I'm struggling <laughs> with different two. That's a different word. <laughs> Julia. That's a different word. It's, 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 exactly. It's, it's got it's, no relation to it at all. No, I know. I was I was trying desperately to buy time while I found one that made sense. You see, the no, problem... There isn't, there isn't any excuse at all. There's no excuse. Mind. I think you're... No right. I'm just a mere mortal little woman. And me too, me too. Yeah, right. Right. Yes. A little blow. Yes. Little little blow. blow. Anyway, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, it cannot possibly be anything but different from. And you'll even get the Telegraph, the Times, your local free newspaper, people in conversation, BBC, everybody using this awful different to. And no, what, the BBC I is no different to that. any other major organisation. Okay, stop doing that, Terry. You're being naughty now. I'm sorry. No, you're you're doing doing any other... Dawson, you know this, this lady is a class in number. We, we want more of her. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but, but, Julia, why do you think people make that mistake? Why is it such a common mistake, do you think? Because they, they're not being taught correctly. But we're going back to grammar, we're going back to Shakespeare. Somebody said, oh, yes, well, you can go back 200 years, and one of you say, no, but Shakespeare would never split infinitives, so you can go back 400 years. It's always been different from, and all of a sudden it creeps in, you get everybody creeps using in. it.
from creeps in. in the House of Commons, you but, know, but um, do, do you see? Prime Minister's question time. Everybody says different too. But it's not because they're not being taught correctly, Julia, because otherwise they would make the mistake with so many other grammatical points, whereas this one specifically is a common one, and yeah. you said it creeps into the language. We wouldn't well, allow it We wouldn't allow it to creep into the language if it offended our hearing considerably. People would be correcting you each time, but when it creeps into the language and it makes no big deal of a difference, even though it's grammatically incorrect, I wonder whether people absorb it because they're thinking, well, I know what it means, different from, different to, what's they the difference? They get corrupted, Doc. They yeah, they may, corrupted. they may do, but they don't get corrupted universally throughout the language. I'm saying there are certain phrases or certain grammatical incorrectness that we absorb because the, 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 the logic of the rule is no longer applicable or it's no longer in stone the logic of the rule is more flexible over a period of time is what no, but no, no, people, people sorry julia julia in the written word all right if you if, if you say that people will slip into it verbally fine but editors in newspapers sub editors shouldn't allow it to be in the printed word why shouldn't they, if everybody's saying it in the written word, in, in the spoken word, why shouldn't they allow it in the printed word? Should the printed word not reflect the spoken no, language? Because, because you are now you're, you're now contradicting yourself in saying that people haven't been taught incorrectly. It's just slipped in. Well, if it's just slipped in, it must have been just slipped in by people teaching the wrong way. Fair enough. I think you've made a valid point. And the people no. that are teaching it... Oh, no. Terry, no. Terry, Terry disagrees. I, I, I've spent some time looking while you were chatting. And according to Oxford's grammar guides, uh, and you know, I, don't, I don't think you can get better than that, the all three versions are correct. Aesthetically, we find them ple differently pleasing, and we find different uses for them, or different sectors of society find different uses for them. But the, the final line here is, some people, uh, where are we? Uh, there's little difference in sense between the three expressions, and all of them are used by respected writers. But does it say oh. they're all three grammatically correct? Is that yes. what it says? Julia, how about that, then? And, well, what, uh, what, what Julia, it's a very sad world. Hang on, Julia. This Julia. is where, this is where um, um, what's its fall slips. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Terry, yeah. do you know? No, you know, what do you know? As standards are slipping, even now with grammar, because so but many people... Why were standards English? right when you learnt English grammar. and they're not right now? You know, yes, say, oh, well, that's all right now because everybody's using it. Did you hear what Terry said? He said, why were standards right when you learnt English, but they're not right now, Julia? Well, that's a very good point. It's <laughs> a very good point. Let's leave that one. Let's, let's leave that one hanging. I really should say goodnight, shouldn't I? No, not at all. But uh, thank you. Your contribution has been immense for this conversation. Thank you very much. 0500 909 693. We've got another 15, 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour of this conversation to go. So pick up the phone and give us a call now and tell us what you feel about these rigid rules of grammar. Should we always apply them or perhaps not?